For this edition of the Truth Athlete Insights, I'm honoured to be joined by a lady who holds the title of the fastest woman in Great Britain. I am indeed here with Montel Douglas at her home training centre at Lee Valley. Hi Montel, thanks for joining us. You are the 100 metre British record holder and you broke Cathy Cook's record which stood for almost a quarter of a century. Tell us about that race and how it felt. Yeah, um, I remember actually, it's quite a while back now, but um, it, was, it was unexpected as well, so that was a bit of a bonus. And um, I remember running the race and not really believing what happened because it was obviously the chance for me to qualify for the Olympic Games at the time. And I remember my coach running up to me and screaming like, we did it, we did it. Aww. So that was an amazing experience for me. Um, it was a bit of a whirlwind as well, so a lot to take in. But, um, but it's a very proud moment and one of my proudest of my whole career. So. I'm sure. And that took you to the Beijing Olympics. Can you yes. describe that experience, competing at an Olympic Games for the first time? Oh, well, like competing at the Olympics is nothing that you can ever describe at really. I mean, it really is. It's the epitome of everyone's of sporting career, their dream. And for me, it was just the same. And I kind of had an insight into that before, having people that had already been before. So I got a little heads up. But you know, to go into the village and to be seen with all different kinds of athletes, um, and not just athletes in my event, just think other sports and meeting the rest of Team GB was, you know, it was, it was a great experience and something that you that I will never forget. Um, but I enjoyed every moment of it and um, made sure I made the most of it at the yeah, time. So I'm hopefully sure. there were more to come. I hope so. And you compete in the hundred meters, which is the sort of pinnacle event, really, of any yeah. championships. But the pressures that come with such an event. Can you describe the lead up and the preparation? That that goes into getting your mindset right for that event. Yeah, definitely. I mean, sometimes actually, especially recently, I've even um, competed and just thought stuff. Why am I doing this? <laughs> why am I standing here? Why do we do this? But because it is very intense, um, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to compete and to perform well. And it really is just kind of testing everything that you've done. Um, I think the key is really just to stay relaxed and to keep everything the same. Um, we kind of panic sometimes when we get to that place and we're going to compete. And we kind of think, oh, maybe I should do this, maybe I should do that. But a lot of the time it is trying to keep everything the same. And for me, it's about you know, having my music on and staying as relaxed as possible because that's when I perform at my best. But what about all the mind games that take place, especially with the men's race, the prowling, the staring, the silly sort of games that go on now? You know, do you have a particular thing that you do to try and put off your competitors? Um, not really, you know. I'm actually probably one of the most, the calmest. <laughs> I like, like a passive aggression. Passive <laughs> really, aggression, very, I like that. Yeah, my aggression is very internalised um, because I'm so bubbly and I'm always smiling. Um, I probably don't look very intimidating, um, but I think my relaxedness is what my, my, may intimidate my competitors because I'm always, literally, you'll see me dancing along, you know, swinging along, and I'm, I'm really just in, engulfed in what I'm doing. Um, and I think that focus will then kind of think, well, she doesn't look... She doesn't look very worried, so um, I'm hoping that, that kind of gives them a little bit of an edge. and the reverse psychology. To, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so I just enjoy it. But is there anything your competitors do that can put you off? Um, not really, you know. Um, I tried to uh, derail it a little bit. I, was when I was very, when I was a little bit younger, I definitely had certain things that people did talking to you in the call room and then saying certain things to you at the call room and when you're young and a little bit naive you don't really realize that that's their game plan until you get older and especially um with like the new full stop start rule a lot of some competitors do uh, deliberate full starts so that everyone's on edge and to me i kind of was like well you know what whatever happens i'm going to just do what i do best and focus on that and that's how i kind of get over that yeah. And do you have any personal superstitions or things you must do before a race for a competition, whether it's something you wear or say? <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of people know me. I know that I've gone to loads, like, I do like, work, work in schools and stuff, I see children, and they always say to me, the teachers say to me, you know, like, we Googled you when we saw, like, Monta Douglas hair. So like, I always <laughs> have this, like, gold flowing locks <laughs> that I usually, um, that I usually race with that I have done for a long time. Um, and usually, like, obviously, like today, I match, like, my clothes and my hairbands and stuff. Well, I was looking at the nails as well. <laughs> yeah. Look at these nails. <laughs> these yeah, are fantastic. Is that I'm something you'll always do? Paint the yeah, nails I ready? Yeah, usually. So, it's, some, it's just cut as well to keep a little bit of glamour into it because, you know, we just, we're just we there, we're pretty much half naked. And we're, yeah. I'm about to, like you said, do do the business and really um, just be as powerful and aggressive as we can. And I, I want to do that with a little bit of style. So, um, it's just something that keeps me kind of sane, really, because I like it makes me feel like I'm just flowing yeah. all the way through. So, I that's like one it. thing that I do. I like it. And also, talking about style and talking about, you know, um, your race, you are a great role model for women, you know, all young women out there because you're an athletic physique and, and we saw from the Olympics that the athletic physique is becoming more inspiring yeah. compared to the skinny sort of models. How do you feel about that position and about your body as an athlete? 
Um, yeah, I think as a, as a role model that we get thrown into that position, um, it's important for us also to embrace our own bodies because at the end of the day we are human and we are ladies, we're female and we all have those insecurities about ourselves um, naturally yeah. but um, we kind of have to be proud of it. I'm learning now to be more proud of it in, in my skin um, just because like you said it, you, become, you become a role model to um, a lot of young females and, and that's one of the things that you, we want to push especially with you know, the Olympic legacy. You want people to look at you and say you know what, actually you worked hard to look like that and we look like that because we want to be the best and that's kind of the, the message that I instill into myself to say well this is I'm doing this for a for a reason and I looked at this because you know I'm healthy I'm fit yeah. and hopefully that's inspiring it's that's a purpose inspiring. as well yes. and I remember Jessica Ennis saying that she initially resisted her muscles when she was younger she didn't yes. like it and then obviously embraced yes. the fact that it was for performance what would your yeah. advice be to young women getting involved in sport or, or activities in, in terms of you know embracing that and and becoming a strong woman yeah I mean it really is about deciding basically what it is that you want it's kind of like what do I want to achieve and you have to say what you're going to do to achieve that and if that means you know you're going to get you know, I'm going to get some guns I get people asking me all the time like if they can touch me or like <laughs> fraud me I had I was in the, the, the changing rooms recently and the girl was like can I touch you <laughs> just to pull your, mu your muscles or something and your, your abs and it's, it's kind of like a, it's a proud thing so I would say you know that they should like you said embrace that and really just and home with yourself and be comfortable with yourself and as long as you're happy doing what you're doing and you know it's not forever most of the time mm -hmm. these things aren't forever we all go well, it takes a lot of hard work exactly, to maintain to maintain it so you know you just just enjoy it while you can and and be proud of it because it's like you know people that want to lose weight they work hard and they see the end result and that is what we display on, like, on a daily basis so. you do look fantastic oh, thank you. and what would you say to women about the opportunities there are with sport you know in the ways you can earn money how that sport can be a career yeah, definitely. Um, it is a, it's a big it's a big thing in, in all of our all of our lives, and a lot of people don't realize realize that. Um, mainly because, especially now, especially in this country with the Olympic legacy, like I said before, and, and building on that, um, a lot of people are getting more interested in sport. Like females are really, really, really going into sport, and there are so many different things that they can do. And it doesn't also, you know, promote a healthy lifestyle. Also promotes other things. You know, you feel better, you feel happier about life, and it also gives you a focus and a drive. Um, and I think that, that that's really important. So people should really just embrace that and kind of follow on from, the, from that and, and be inspired from what you know, people have achieved in before and hopefully gear them on. And have you seen that change since the Olympics? Have you seen the signs of a legacy being put in place? Yes, definitely. I've seen a lot of people, especially speaking about it, people that want to get into different sports and trying, you know, sports actually that they never did before, which is actually really cool. Um, a lot of people have been more appreciative of what it takes actually to get to the top, which is really nice for us because they really um, sometimes don't understand what it actually takes on a daily basis to get that. They see the, just the start line and then the gun and then they see us race. Um, but it's, you know, it's every day, it's day in, day out. I'm here, you know, on the grind and, and it's nice for them to to see that and, and I'm seeing that now especially here they have a lot of kids that come in and want to take part in athletics. Sort of the truth behind it really yes. and what would a training cycle look like for you sort of a year's training cycle you've got warm weather training obviously you've got yeah. the harder winter stuff how does that sort of look? Pan out well um, it's, it's I think it's similar for most athletes so um, our seasons I mean we really train for most of the year, like 10 months. I train 10 months for basically like sub 11 seconds. That is the goal. <laughs> and crazy. literally that's what it is. I train day in, day out. And and um, so the winter months that we are now, we'll have like a three month, maybe four month block, depending on when you start. And that is, uh, you know, it's hard grafting. It's long days. It's heavy load. And then we go into maybe an indoor season like I am now. And we'll come off a little bit and try and prepare and get sharp and then work on more power and speed rather than all the long stuff to try and build up the endurance and the base. And then we go to warm weather training, like you said, and that's always fun, love that. Because <laughs> you get to go in the sun and actually you know, do, do what you do somewhere where it's nicer and you don't have to struggle to, to, to do it and get out of bed in the morning, stuff like that. And you're um, there just to focus on your sport, there's exactly, no other distractions, I assume. Exactly, so you can just focus on that for the time that you're there and really put the work in and that's when you know, the real stuff starts, you start competing. And our season carries on right through till like August, September, so we, you know, four months, four months of the season we'll be competing from April to September and then, and then we have a month off. Just, just a, a month. month. <laughs> just a month to quickly get in what you need to get into. <laughs> Eat what you want, go where you want to go. And then you go straight back in. Yeah. And it all starts over again. It does indeed. It's a tough life. It is. Especially <laughs> Christmas. Christmas is great. People say, oh, you back holiday. And I'm like, my body doesn't know it's back holiday. No. So it's a normal day for me. It's a normal training yeah, day. It's a normal oh. day. But outside of athletics, what do you do to relax? What do you do to have fun? Me, I'm really low, I'd say low maintenance. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I really am. I'll just, 
I'm, I'm cool to just chill out. Um, I'm a big movie buff, to be fair, I am. I, I, I can literally sit in my house and just watch movies day in, day out. Because Favourite movie? So my favourite movie? Oh, I always say Fifth Element. The Fifth okay. Element. I don't know why. It's something that I watched when I was little as well, like the labyrinth. Things that I watched when I was little, they kind of, I could watch them over and over 50 <laughs> times and be fine. So I basically just, you know, go to the movies um, a lot or, or chill at home and just unwind because a lot of it's just literally learning how to switch off yeah. and not be focused on it all the time. That's what I like to do rather than stimulate myself somewhere else. I mean, obviously you can't go out drinking and partying a lot no. of the time. So is that something you miss or is it not your kind of bag anyway? Not really, no. I mean, it's not at all. I don't, it's never has been, to be fair. I think it's someone who with that lifestyle might struggle because you can't do that. And when I was younger, especially university, I had a lot of sacrifices. That was probably the biggest sacrifice of my life, just been having to, to work and train and study at the same time and have a social life. It was just almost impossible to, you know, to have a boyfriend or anything. It was just hard. But... Um, but it's helped me grow to where I am now, in a, in a sense, and I've gotten used to it. And now it's literally, we train so hard that I literally can't do anything else after. <laughs> no <I'm> energy. <laughs> I'm literally too tired, so I just like want to just relax anyway. So I don't really miss that. And you know, sometimes I just try and make you know birthdays and stuff, important stuff, and, and that's how I get my little doses of fun. Yeah. Fun in here. And what are your goals for this year? My goals really run really fast. <laughs> Uh, no, my goal, my main goal is really to be healthy, injury free. It's such a cliche, but um, it's a massive thing, especially for me. who has been out for quite a while, not being at my best for a while. I really want to stay healthy and fit. I know that that would be key to my success. Um, but obviously, the, the immediate goals is to have a great European, you know, European indoor season, and um, hopefully make European indoors. Um, and go on from there and then the World Championships outdoors and but I really want to be more consistent I think that's where I need to go with my, with my racing if I'm consistently at a better level um, then the sky's the limit really with that so I really want to just hone in on that but it's going well right now so fingers crossed that that all goes to that. It sounds exciting and within the Great Britain team who are your main rivals to get the place in the team for the Europeans and the World there's, Championships? Uh, that's hard to say you know because we don't like to look at rivals and people are going where are your rivals but it's hard because um, there are so many talented youngsters that come through and there are also guys like me who've been around for a long time so you're always wary of everyone I don't take anything for granted you know, I never have done because um, I've always I've come from the top and been at the bottom, very bottom so I never take it for granted that anyone is, uh, is a rival for me and that's how I feel when I step on the track I don't care if the, if the, if the, the females in my race they're, they're competitors and really it's that mentality that I have to to stick to because you know you just have to be fast in this game you don't have to be a certain age yeah so as long as I can focus on myself and, and produce goods um, the only rival will really be myself you can't change what other day. people do no you yeah. can't so I just focus on myself really and and, and I know it sounds a bit it is a bit cliche but it's the only thing you can do for good attitude that's the one that will help you succeed so. I'm sure well I wish you best of luck I've got a quick Thanks. fire round for you just give me the first answer that comes into your mind okay so if you were not an athlete what would you be <sighs> Oh, a dancer. Ah, a dancer. What makes you happy? Um, popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> and sad? Oh, sad. Um, people struggling. Okay. People struggling makes me sad. What's your favourite word? Oh, go, I guess. <laughs> I don't know why. Very right, apt. Oh, I just love it. Go. And if you were no. stuck in a lift, who would you like it to be with? Oh, if I was stuck in a lift, that's tricky. The first one because my mum was my mum, actually. Oh, <laughs> mom, yeah. I like that. Um, if you had one last meal, what would it be? Oh, last meal. Popcorn again? <laughs> exactly, it probably would be. You know, if I didn't say popcorn before, it would have been popcorn. Um, last meal would probably be pizza, I think. Pizza? Yeah, I love pizza. And who was your childhood crush? Oh, <laughs> first thing that came to mind was uh, Nick from Backstreet Boys. Oh. <laughs> if you were an animal, what would you be? Oh, have to be uh, like a panther, I guess. Best music yeah. track to work out to? Oh, that's tricky. There's loads. Um, it probably, it sounds, it's probably anything Nicki Minaj. Okay. And your favourite place in the world? is the track. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to say that, you're an athlete. Are you going to break your British record this year? Oh, gosh. Yes, I know. I can't say no. Yes. Yes. Well, we hope you do. Thank you so much for talking to us. It's been a pleasure. Now, join us next time for the next edition of the Truth Athlete Insights. Thanks for watching.